بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to what follows my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Inshallah ta'ala in tonight, tonight's lecture we're going to share a dua of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this dua is actually found in adhkaru al-sabah wal masa so this is a dua that we are encouraged by the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we say every morning once and every evening once that's how important it is and that's how close this dua should be to the heart of the believer. We're taught this dua through a hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu narrated and he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once said to his daughter Fatima radiyallahu anha, he said to her, مَا يَمْنَعُكِ أَن تَسْمَعِي مَا أُوصِيكِ بِهِ أن تقولي إذا أصبحت وإذا أمسيت يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك أستغيث أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين أنا سب مالك رضي الله عنه narrated that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم told his daughter Fatima what is preventing you from listening and doing what I am advising you of that you say when you reach the morning and you reach the evening Say, Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum, which is, O oh, the ever living. We're going to explain this word and this name of Allah Azza wa Jal, the sustainer of all. I seek help and assistance through your mercy. Rectify and perfect for me all my affairs and do not entrust me. Don't leave me to myself even for the blink of an eye. Brothers and sisters in Islam, this is advice from Sayyidul Khalq, the chief. The greatest of mankind, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to his daughter, and his daughter is Sayyida to Nisa al Alameen, Sayyida to Ahl al Jannah. She's the chief, the greatest of all women. From the greatest man to the greatest woman. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching this dua, this dhikr. Fatima, of course, radiallahu anha, she died young. She was only 25 years old. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that I have never seen anyone more similar to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam than Fatima. Fatima was very similar to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was similar to him in his manners, in his character, and in most of his affairs. Even the way she walked, she would walk exactly like her father, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Aisha radiallahu anha narrated this uh, 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 upon she narrated this about her. And, and when Fatima radiallahu anha, she'd enter upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon her father, he would stand for her. He would kiss her and sit her in his place. And if he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered upon her, she would get up, kiss him and sit him in his place as Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullah narrated. So this is now great advice from the greatest to the greatest. How much more are you and I in need of this dua and this dhikr? Bi'ithnillah, you'll realize its importance once we go through its words. But there's a few matters to observe here before we start with this dhikr. Number one, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a father would encourage his family upon the worship of Allah. In this instance, he is teaching his daughter a dua. And this, brothers and sisters in Islam, is from the most fundamental of matters of maintaining a righteous family, especially in today's day and age. Today's day and age, there's all sorts of corruption and fasad and fitan, a zina, a riba, a shirk is all over the place, homosexuality. Parents are worried, they're terrified. I bring a child to this worldly life. And that's the situation on earth. 
That's the situation of the society and the community we're living in. So parents are worried and rightfully so. But I say, what have you done about it? What have you done? What have we done other than just complain? Eh, wallah brother, this country and this country and that and fasad and wherever you go. This is all we've done, complain. Yet the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us that if you actually had a concern for your family, then you would teach them a deen. And from this matter is this dua. One of the greatest matters that will save your family from corruption and facade around you, no matter how strong it got, was to teach them their deen. Because nothing will protect you from al facade and sins other than knowledge in Allah Azza wa Jal and knowledge in Al-Islam. And that was the life of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine. Imagine he is teaching Fatima, she has already promised the paradise. Why is he teaching her this, this great dua and this dhikr and many other worships? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would wake up Ali and Fatima to observe the night prayer. He would wake up his own wife for Al-Witr. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say, May Allah bestow his mercy upon a man that got up and prayed at night and woke his wife up and if she didn't, he sprinkled some water in her face so that she gets up and prays as well. See in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how he would encourage, he would encourage this attitude of the husband and wife and the family encouraging, motivating one another upon the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal. For indeed this matter is a lifesaver in a day and age that we are in. And so this is the greatest responsibility you have towards your family, to teach them a deen. More than sheltering them, feeding them, providing them water to drink and clothing them and paying their education and taking them for certain entertainments and so on. All of that is good, all of that you need to do. But above the list is you teaching them their deen. This is what you'll be questioned for on the Day of Judgment and that's the greatest of matters. Right, and there are hundreds of stories in the Quran about Allah Azza wa Jal telling us about parents, fathers, and their relationship with their children, and how they would advise them upon the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal, like Yaqub and Ibrahim and Luqman, and these stories are plenty in the Quran. So that's what we're learning from this hadith, just by observing the chain. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching Fatima. Ah, then I as a father, as a mother, need to be teaching my children as well. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a role model in every aspect. A role model in how correct parenting should be. And above the list is you teaching your family. Number two, we observe from this hadith the style of speech. Have you noticed what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? It wasn't a me, ya Fatima, every morning, every evening, say such and such. Listen to what he said. He said to her, ya Fatima, ma yamna'uki ma tasma'i an usiki bihi. He said to her, what is preventing you from listening and doing what I'm advising you of? See, this style of speech, it creates passion, an eagerness, an excitement in the heart of the listener to pay extra attention to what is about to be said. What is preventing you from doing what I advise you? Well, nothing is preventing Fatima. Nothing is preventing her from listening and implementing what Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants to say to her. But there is something in this speech. It grabs attention. It's like if I was to say to you, I take you to the side and I say to your brother, what is stopping you from listening to my advice? So you look at me in amazement. Nothing, Allah. Tell me, what do you have? What do you have for me to say? So it's a kind of style that grabs the attention of the listener. And that's how knowledge should be. You should make it attractive. Make it interesting, especially among the family members. So this is what the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing with his daughter. Now she's excited. She wants to listen. What does he have to tell me? What do I need to learn from him? And the third thing we observe in this hadith and the final thing is the word al-wasiyyah. What prevents you from listening to my advice? Al-wasiyyah. See, al-wasiyyah, what is al-wasiyyah? Al-wasiyyah is when someone commands you to do good or recommends to you a good deed with emphasis. So we realize from this word, al wasiyah it's like the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam held this dua in high regard in his heart. And like this is something really precious. This is a wasiyah, ya Fatima. You know, it's like, it's like someone departing this worldly life. 
You know al-wasiyah is, we all know al-wasiyah is the book, is the will that a person writes before his death. So al-wasiyah is like, Fatima, I'm giving you parting advice. This is going to be so real, so honest. If there's anything I need to tell you, take this before I die. So this is powerful dua, powerful dhikr that he's teaching her. It begins, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum. That's how it begins, Allahu Akbar. Calling Allah Azza wa Jal with two great names of His, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The ever living, the maintainer and sustainer of all things. And this is called at tawassul. At tawassul means to seek a way to Allah Azza wa Jal. There are certain ways in how you can call on to Allah Azza wa Jal. One of these ways is to go through his names and attributes. Hadat tawassul. At tawassul. Seeking a way to Allah Azza wa Jal through his names and attributes. And these are two great names of Allah Azza wa Jal. And by the way, this is one of the greatest etiquette of dua. Before you begin your dua, you start by praising Allah Azza wa Jal. The best way to praise Allah is by calling on to his beautiful names. That's exactly what Allah Azza wa Jal said. وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah Azza wa Jal belongs the most beautiful names. So call unto him through them. So this dua now, before we're seeking Allah's mercy and help and aid, we're calling unto two beautiful names of his. We're saying, يَا حَيْ يَا قَيُّومٌ and I tell you something, like Surah Al-Fatiha. Surah Al-Fatiha, we don't, Allahu Akbar, ihdina salat al-mustaqeem. La. Praise Allah first. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm Al-Deen. This is all a praise of Allah. Then acknowledge your state that you're a humble servant before Allah. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. And now you're in a good position to make a dua. Make your dua. Ihdina salat al-mustaqeem. And there is something significant and special about these two names, Al-Hayy, Al-Qayyum. See, these two names have been mentioned as being the greatest names of Allah Azza wa Jal. There is an authentic hadith, Abu Umam al-Bahili radiyallahu anhu narrates, and he says that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ismullahi al-A'zam, the greatest name of Allah. If you were to call unto him through these names, you will most definitely be answered. He said, they are found in three surah of the Qur'an. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran, or Surah Taha. If you look closely to these three surah, you're going to find two names of Allah that repeat in every one of these three surah. And that is no doubt, Al-Hayy Al-Qayyum. In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa Al-Hayy Al-Qayyum. In Surah Ali Imran, Alif La Mim Allahu La Ilaha Illa Huwa Al Hayy Al Qayyum. In Surah Taha, Wa Anat Al Wujuh Lil Hayy Al Qayyum. Allahu Akbar. If then now the greatest name of Allah Azza Wa Jal that you can ever call Him with is Al Hayy Al Qayyum. Uh, Ibn Al Qayyim, Rahimahullah, actually mentioned this. Another scholars mentioned that the greatest name of Allah is His name Allah, right? And there's no problem that you call unto Allah through His name, Ya Allah. That's excellent as well. That's a great name of Allah. al hayy Al-Qayyum. You mix it around and bi ta'ala your dua will be answered by Allah Azza wa Jal. So we're off to a powerful start. Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum. Why are they the greatest names of Allah? I tell you why. These two names of Allah, they actually combine and they gather all the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why they're the most powerful and considered the greatest names of Allah Azza wa Jal. How so? What do we mean? That they combine and they gather all the names and attributes of Allah. Let me tell you basic language. You see, the attributes of Allah are of two types. There's something called sifat dhatiyah. These are attributes that are ascribed to the self of Allah Azza wa Jal. Self-attributes, right? They have always been intrinsically inherent and bound to the self of Allah Azza wa Jal. Such as Allah is al-alim, knowledgeable, al-ilm. والقدرة, ability, والعزة, might and power, والحكمة, wisdom. These are what? These are called sifat ذاتيه. Self-attributes. Allah has always been alim. He's always been qadir. He's always been hakim. Right? And then there, there is something called الصفات الفعلية. Meaning actional attributes. So one, self-attributes. And then there is Actional attributes, attributes that are ascribed to actions of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
such as an istiwa, Allah ascending and being established upon the throne, such as descending and nuzul, Allah Azza wa Jal, He comes down. These are these happen whenever Allah Azza wa Jal wants to exercise them, right? And there is al maji that Allah Azza wa Jal comes on the day of judgment. Now, the attribute ya hay when we say the name of Allah al hay. It includes all as-sifat al all the attributes that ascribe Allah Azza wa They are all included al-hay. And we say al-qayyum, the one who is the sustainer of all things, that includes all as-sifat al the attributes that are ascribed to his actions. So al hayyul al-qayyum covers everything about Allah Azza wa names and attributes. al hayyul al-qayyum. I tell you brothers and sisters in Islam, listen to this. The one who knows the name of Allah, Al-Hay, will most definitely find peace and comfort and tranquility in his life, no doubt. I'll give you an example. Imagine a child. He comes to his father and he says to his father, Father, if you die, who will feed us? Who will provide for us? Who will look after us? Who's going to drive us around? Who will pay our rent? Imagine a young boy saying to his father like this, all worried. And I, this is not a case to imagine. This actually happened. We ask Allah Azza wa to make it easier upon our brothers and sisters in Islam. This is, this is the concern of children in a battle zone. They say to them, if, if, if you die, who will look after us? Who will pay our rent? Who will feed us? Like, this is real. Then imagine, imagine now, the father turns back to his child and says to him, Son, don't worry. I am hay. I'm alive. I'm here. And so long as I'm here, son, you don't have to worry about anything. How much comfort does that bring to this child? To the kid, he's comforted. Ah, oh, okay, my dad's here, he's alive. So things are all good. Allahu Akbar. And to Allah Azza wa Jal, of course, belongs the highest of examples. But Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us, He is al Hay. He's the all living, He never dies. This is supposed to bring immense comfort and peace and tranquility to the heart. Knowing that Allah, your sustainer, your provider, your creator, the one who decrees all your affairs and matters is alive. Al-Hay subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see this name of Allah, Al-Hay, it settled down a, a community that fell into chaos and panic and worry. And that is when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. You and I will never understand what it means that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died. Those companions that were alive at the time and witnessed and experienced the death of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were all shaken. Umar radiallahu anhu, he denied it. Gets onto the member, not on the member, he's just screaming among the people, anyone who says the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has died, I'll deal with him. He only went to Allah like Musa went and he'll come back. And he's in denial. Uthman radiallahu anhu, he falls. Ali radiallahu anhu falls. The Sahaba, all of them are in shock. People are crying. Al Masjid is, 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 is just it's screaming with pain and agony. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu takes the opportunity and walks in, and really no one wanted to listen to him. Until Umar radiallahu anhu, he, he said to him, sit down. He didn't want to sit down. So Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu proceeded until he got to the mimbar and he got up. You know what he did? He said to the people, imagine he said to them, brothers and sisters in Islam, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away, inna lillahu No one would have heard him. But he read to them Quran, and he reminded them of the name of Allah, al-Hayy. He said to them, man kana ya'budu muhammadan fa inna muhammadan qad mat. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayy la yamut. Anyone who worships Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa then he has died. And anyone who worships Allah, then Allah is all living. He doesn't die. And it comforted an entire people. Imagine, the name of Allah, Al-Hay. That was the secret in the words of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to settle down an entire community of companions that were shaken by this calamity. The name of Allah Azza wa Jalla, I'm telling you, al hayyid is enough to instill that comfort and peace in the heart of the believer. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he said, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Put your trust and rely upon al hayy 
the one who does not die. You see, here he said, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَىٰ الْحَيِّ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَىٰ الْحَيِّ Why? You know, when we ask the question, why do we have to rely upon Allah? Here the answer is in the ayah itself, because he's al-hayy. And if you rely upon al-hayy, that means all your affairs bi idnillah will be fulfilled because you relied upon a strong source. You are relied upon the all living. And if you rely upon other than Allah, then everything other than Allah is doomed, it's destroyed, it perishes, it's weak, it's gonna die. So if you rely on other than Allah, you relied on something that is very weak. So the moment that thing dies and it's destroyed, you have unfinished business. You relied on someone that died. What do I do now? Who do I go to? That's why we rely upon him because he's alive no matter. So because Allah is alive, your matters will always, will always be fulfilled. And so this is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching Fatima radiallahu anha. Make this dua. Remember the name of Allah al hayy in the early hours of the morning after Salat al-Fajr and again after Al-Asr is the name of Allah you cannot be heedless of. You cannot forget this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he's the one who lives heedless of the name of Allah azza wa jal al hayy lives a miserable life. The moment you learn this name and you come close to Allah through his name al hayy you'll find much peace and comfort in your life. And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say from his dua, Allahumma laka aslamt, wa bika amant, wa alayka tawakkalt, wa ilayka anabt, wa bika khasamt. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika izzatika, la ilaha illa anta an tudillani. Anta al-hayyu alladhi la yamut, wal jinn wal insu yamutun. What does all this mean? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to make a dua, he used to say, Oh Allah, to you alone I have submitted, and in you alone I believe, and upon you I rely. And to you alone I turn in repentance. And for you alone I compete and I fight the enemy. Oh Allah, I seek protection from your might that you misguide me. You are the all living, the one who doesn't die while jinn and mankind die. When the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew the name of Allah al hayy that's when he was able to announce that he submits to Allah alone and he believes in him and he relies upon him and he repents to him and he battles for him. He does everything, khalas. Because of the name of Allah Azza wa Jal Al Hayy. Now all this is possible. All these types of worships are possible. Allahu Akbar. The name of Allah Azza wa Jal Al Hayy. It, it, it perfects and completes the tawheed of a person that is supposed to be in his heart. A heart that doesn't know the name of Allah Al Hayy is very, very deficient in its tawheed to Allah Azza wa Jal. Well, Hayy is opposite to Al Mayyit. Hayy, the all living. Opposite to that, the dead. SubhanAllah. See, the name of Allah, Al-Hayy, the All-Living, the one who possesses complete and perfect life, unlike human beings and animal kind and jinn. We're Hayy as well. We're Hayy. We have Hayat. We're living. But our life, our Hayat, this attribute of ours is very weak and very faulty and very deficient. Allah Azza wa Jal, Him being Al-Hayy is very complete and perfect. I give you an example. For example, us, there came a stage in life where we didn't even exist. لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Then that's the first deficiency. Number two, when we sleep, we are considered dead. النَّوْمْ أَخُ الْمَوْتِ Sleep is the brother of death. Huh? That's in deficient life. Our hayat is in def- it's deficient. When we get sick and ill and it takes a toll on our life, our life is incomplete. When we are heedless, and we're not aware of our surrounding, we're considered dead as well. And then eventually we will die. So look at our hayat, how faulty it is compared to the name of Allah, al Hay. He has always existed. That's why he is al awwal the first. He doesn't have a beginning. Nothing came before him. Because if anything came before him, that would be the Lord. So nothing came before him. And this is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Allah, al awwal alladhi laysa qablahu shay. There's nothing before him. And he's al-akhir, he's the last. What does it mean that Allah is the last? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَلَيْسَ بَعْدَكَ شَيْءٍ Meaning, he remains after everything is destroyed. That's what al-akhir means. He remains after everything is destroyed. There is no ending for him. And that's why he is al-hayy, the all-living, he never dies. Therefore, none has the right to be worshipped except Allah azza wa jal. 
Ibrahim alayhi salam used to use the name of Allah al Hayy in his da'wah. He used to look at his people and they used to worship idols. And he would say to them, Hal yasma'unakum if tad'oon? Do these idols of yours, do they listen to you when you call out unto them? No, they don't because they're dead. What is he saying in this? He's saying, but my Lord listens if you call because he's al Hayy. You see, he used to bring this in his da'wah. Very effective. Anyone that is upon a worship, other than worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, could be challenged in his faith. Who are you worshipping? What are you turning to? An animal or a stone or a rock or a human being? All of these matters die. Once they're finished, once they're dead, who do you call on to? Like Ibrahim alayhi salam, once again, he will come out to them and he's establishing proof against them. He'll say to them, ah, look at the stars. They're my Lord. Oh, he doesn't mean that they're his Lord, but he's establishing a case against his people. He's going to fall, make them fall in a trap. Otherwise, Ibrahim is very certain that Allah is his Lord, but he wants to expose their foolishness. So he says, look at the stars. They're my Lord. So once they disappeared, he said, I don't like things that come and go. Oh, Lord, what's this Lord? If, if I want to call unto my Lord in the morning, well, I, I need to wait until the night for him to appear again. That doesn't make sense. So he sees the moon. He says, ah, this is my Lord. But then when the moon went, uh, Heather, what's this Lord? During the day I need to call him as well, it's very important. Heather, he's gone. So once the sun came out, خلاص, this one's the big one. This is my Lord. Then when it disappeared, خلاص, he came out to them and he established, he says, I've turned and I've submitted to the Lord of the heavens and the earth. What, Ibrahim السلام, wasn't confused about who his Lord was. He knows Allah is his Lord. But he said what he said to expose his people. I can't, I can't have the stars as my Lord. I need to call unto my Lord 24 hours of the day, seven days of the week. The stars won't do this because they don't appear in the day. The moon won't do that because it doesn't appear in the day. The sun won't do this because it doesn't appear in the night. Subhanallah. So he establishes once again a da'wah through the name of Allah al And Allah is, is hey, He is available for me. Any time of the day and the night, I can raise my hand and I call unto him and he listens and he answers. Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal is al hay al hay meaning he's the one who gave life. Allah Azza wa Jal gives life to whoever he wants in unimaginable ways. Like when that man was killed among Bani Israel and they were confused who killed him. So Allah Azza wa Jal commands them to slaughter a cow. And after a long story of questions and answers, eventually they grab a cow and they kill it. They take a part of the cow, its leg, its head, whatever it is, they took a part. Allah said to them, Take some of the cow and strike the dead person with it. And Allah Azza wa Jal resurrected him. al Hay resurrected a man that had died in front of everyone to witness and see. He got up. He announced to his killers and he went back and died. This is Allah's name, al Hayy. He gives life to his creation in unimaginable ways. And just like that, Allah Azza wa Jal will resurrect us on the day of judgment. When you think of the name of Allah, al Hayy, it reminds you of your resurrection until you will stand before Allah Azza wa Jal, held accountable for everything that you did and said. And the greatest, greatest effect of the name of Allah, al Hayy, and listen to this very carefully. That Allah Azza wa Jal gives the believers life with Iman. This is from the greatest meanings of Al Hayy. He gives us life through Iman. Allah Azza wa Jal said, "O man kana maytan, fa ahyina wa jalna lahu nuran yamshi bihi fi nas." Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about man kana maytan, a person that had died. Death in this ayah here refers to Al Kufr. His soul and his heart and his state is dead with disbelief. We gave him life. Life here, meaning we guided him to Islam and Iman. So every time you say, al Hay, it's like within your heart you're saying, Oh Allah, grant me the most important hayat, the most important life I'm supposed to possess and hold, and that is a life upon Iman and Islam. This is all in the name of Allah al Hay, and so much more. But the name of Allah al Hay, I shared with you some things. These are the manners that you're supposed to be conscious of. 
when you're calling out Allah Azzawajal's great name, Al Hayy. Allahu Akbar. طيب, Allah Azzawajal is Al Hayy. How does that benefit me? Why should I depend on him? Why should I rely on him? Because he's also Al Qayyum. Al Qayyum. Al Qayyum always comes with the name of Allah Al Hayy. They're inseparable. These two are always together. Al Hayy Al Qayyum. Al Qayyum. يعني القائم بنفسه المقيم لغيره. Very simple definition. القيوم means the self-sufficient. He is independent of his creation and all his creation at the same time are in desperate need of him. هذا القيوم. You got it? Very simple language. القيوم. He doesn't need us. We desperately need him. هذا القيوم. We cannot exist without Allah عز وجل. He provides for us, he nurtures us, he sustains us, he guides us, and everything else in life he does for us. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ قَائِمٌ From his name Al-Qayyum. أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ عَلَى كُلِّ نَفْسِ Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks about him being the one who provides and sustains all nafs, all souls and all living creatures on earth. Allahu Akbar. You see, us... We depend on each other for survival, right? The baby is depending on his mother and his parents that he keeps alive. Then the child depends on his parents. Then once you grow up and you're a child, you depend on your cheat teachers that they teach you, educate you, you learn from them. We see that the wife depends on the husband for financial responsibility, for him to fulfill his financial responsibility. The husband is depending on his work and his boss that he pays him. And all of us are linked in one way or another. We depend on each other. The sick is depending on the doctor to give him the cure, the medicine, whatever it is, and so on. But Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't depend on anyone. Doesn't depend on anyone for his existence at all. If I was to tell you, I said to your brother, sister, can you be a qayyum tonight for the street that you live in? Just for one night and just for your street. That means you need to provide for everyone on that street. You need to solve all their problems. You need to listen to their requests and their needs in their multiple languages. Well, bad luck, khalas. you got to learn and you got to know and understand everyone. Then you need to regulate everyone's blood pressure in the street and maintain everyone's cells and their organ functions. Then you need to look after every bird and every dog and every cat and every insect and anything that crawls and moves up and down that street. Right, right, you, can't even, you can't even regulate your own inside. What's inside of you, you can't even get to. How are you going to be a qayyum for your street? That's why أَفَمَنْ هُوَ قَائِمٌ Allah Azza wa Jal does that. Not only for a street, but for every street in the country, and then for the entire globe, and he's been doing it from day one until the end of time. Al-Qayyum, Allahu Akbar, Al-Qayyum. And he's not distracted by anything. And everything is done at the same time. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, وَمَا خَلْقُكُمْ وَلَا بَعْثُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا All of us in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, like one single body. He creates us all like one body. And he causes us death like one body. And he resurrects us all like one body. And he looks after us all like one body. Subhanallah, Al-Hayyu, Al-Qayyum, the one who knows the name of Allah, Al-Qayyum. His heart increases in knowledge of Allah, Azza wa Jal. And his heart begins to recognize the greatness of Allah, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Al-Hayyu, Al-Qayyum, you can't do a single thing without Al-Qayyum. You can't wake up. You need Al-Qayyum to wake up. You need Al-Qayyum in order for you to eat and digest this food and remain healthy. You need Al-Qayyum to purify and rectify your heart and cleanse it from sins and transgression and rebellion. If you need money, you need Al-Qayyum. Whatever you need in life, you'll need Al-Qayyum subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now after calling Allah Azza wa Jal through these two powerful, beautiful names of His that have so much relevance in your life, there is... Al-Hay all around in your life. The fact that you're still alive, that's because Allah is Al-Hay. The fact that you're sustained and you've eaten today, it's because of Allah Al-Qayyum. Now you're calling onto these two names. You're acknowledging the favor of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you. Now look at this. And remember I told you these are two names of Allah that if you are to ask Him through them, the dua is most likely accepted and not rejected. Then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells her, teaches her to say, Birahmatika astaghith. Ya hayu ya qayyum, birahmatika astaghith. Oh, all living, 
and the sustainer of all things. Through your mercy alone I seek your help and assistance. What a powerful dua. Birahmatika astaghith. You know, in the Arabic language, it's perfectly fine to flip them over and to say, astaghithu birahmatika. You can say that. So what is the difference between saying, as it mentioned in the hadith, birahmatika first, then astaghith? It, it creates something called the ikhtisas. It implies exclusivity. What does that mean? It means only through your mercy and no one else, I'm going to seek help. And you know, you've just cut everyone out of the picture. Everyone's out of the equation. I don't involve anyone at all. The only one I'm seeking his help through his mercy is Allah Azza wa Jal and no one else. Powerful. This in itself implies a tawheed in the heart of a person. Because that's exactly the state you want to reach when you're in a deep calamity. When you are suffering a loss or any kind of trouble in life. That's the words you want to scream out from your heart before your tongue. Birahmatika astaghith. And I tell you, al-istighatha. Uh, What's astaghith? Al-istighatha. Ulama rahimahumullah, they say al-istighatha ya talabu al-ghawth. Talabu al-ghawth, yani, istighatha is to seek relief and help and aid and support and assistance from Allah Azza wa Jal that he save you from evil and harm and fitan and fasad and trouble and sins and fitan and so on. That's what astaghith means. It's to seek Allah's help to save you from trouble, to save you from sin. That's what al-istighatha is. Birahmatika astaghith means, Oh Allah, I ask you, I implore you, I beg you through your mercy. The mercy of Allah that has encompassed all things that you save me from my calamities. Birahmatika astaghith. Save me from misguidance. Save me from fitan. Save my iman. Birahmatika astaghith. How important is this dua, especially in this day and age? That people are losing their iman, losing their deen, facing all sorts of calamities and tests and trials and sins and so on. Hada, a very important dua. We're taught to say it once in the morning, once in the evening. And you know, wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, there are things in life that don't have a solution. Absolutely no worldly solution whatsoever. Their only solution is Allah. In fact, there are things like this in life. Yani, yani look, at, uh, look, at the case, uh, look at the case of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the battle of Badr, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he says, I did not hear anyone seeking anything more intense than what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was seeking from his Lord on the day of Badr. He was seeking something I had never seen anyone seek it that intensely. Like what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? Listen, he was saying, Oh Allah, fulfill your promise upon me. Oh Allah, grant me what you promised. Grant us victory in Badr. Oh Allah, if this group of Muslims are destroyed, you will never be worshipped on earth. To the point where Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu would embrace the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from behind him. After his cloak had fallen, he puts it back on him and he embraces him. And he says, oh messenger of Allah, this dua of yours is enough. And Allah will grant you what he promised you. Allah is certain in his promise. But I tell you something. You see that? That situation in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Badr. Allah, there was actually no worldly means to support them and to help them. There's no backup coming. They're 314 companions. They're on a battlefield. They were not ready for this battle. Their swords are not sharpened. They haven't gotten the best of swords with them, right? They've left them in Al Madina. The spears, they're not with them and sharpened. The horses are not enough. Wal Kuffar are coming 1,000 of them and are they all prepared? There's no backup arriving. There's nothing at all. Sometimes I'm telling you there are things that have no solution. The only solution is, Ya Rabb, aghithni. Lord, I am seeking your help and your assistance that you saved me from this calamity. You know, like now, similar to the situation today on earth, you look around you, Wallah, it's been a few months, but there's nothing, no one can do anything. 
No one can do anything. Khalas. Worldly means have been cut off as much as you want to do. You literally cannot do anything. I'm telling you there are situations that are not in our hand. Khalas. These are moments in where you must implore Allah through this dua, Ya Rabb Aghithni. Al-Istighatha is for moments like this. Al-Istighatha is for moments where you don't have a solution anymore. Allah Azza wa Jal, He tells us about in the Quran, and He uses this word, about parents with their rebellious children. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَالَّذِي قَالَ لِوَالِدَيْهِ أُفِّلْ لَكُمَا Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about children that become rebellious. They come to their parents and they say to them, أُفِّلْ لَكُمَا Uff, you know the word uff? The word uff is a word of transgression, rebellion. So this kid now, he's rebelling against his parents. What is he saying? He's saying, أُفِّلْ لَكُمَا أَتَعِدَا نِنِي أَنْ أُخْرَجْ Allah, he's become an atheist. He says to his parents, you people keep promising me an أُخْرَجْ that I'll be resurrected and I'll come out of my grave. وَقَدْ خَلَتِ الْقُرُونُ مِنْ قَبْلِي And all these past nations have come and they've gone and I haven't seen anyone being resurrected from his grave. There are people that have died thousands and thousands of years ago. Where are they? No one's come out of his grave. So stop fooling me and stop telling me that I'll come out of my grave. And This is a rebellious child that has become an atheist. And he's saying this to his parents. You know what Allah Azza wa Jal says that the parents do? وَهُمَا يَسْتَغِيثَانِ اللَّهِ the parents, they're in a situation where, Ya Allah, save our son. Yani this is when a parent has reached a moment in life. Well, I've done everything for him. I've taken him to the sheikh, Islamic schools, Quran teacher, good environment, good friends. He's at the masjid. He's got no bad friends. I've saved him. I've removed the phone from his house, from his hand, removed, deleted social media. Um, he's still rebelling. We, Sheikh doesn't have a magic pill. At that moment, وَهُمَا يَسْتَغِيثَانِ اللَّهِ خلاص, there are moments in life you need to see them for what they are. Man, nothing on earth would be a solution. خلاص, All the worldly solutions have cut. You've got only one thing left and that's the most powerful thing. Why haven't you exercised that yet? People observe and they see. There's no more worldly solution. Yet they still have somewhere in their mind that there is a world of solution. And they'll go from place to place. That's a humiliation. When are you going to be awakened to turn to the one in the heavens and realize this is where all solutions are from? And say, بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثِ الْإِسْتِغَافَةِ This is a beautiful worship that Allah Azza wa Jal loves to see from the servant. Allahu Akbar. بِرَحْمَتِكَ أَسْتَغِيثِ This is the medicine. This is the cure. This is the solution. Now, so the human being is upon great danger in this life, except if Allah Azza wa was to aid him and assist him. Bi rahmatik. When you say bi rahmatik, you're remembering the mercy of Allah. You see, the ease and ease of transgression and sin and missing prayers, or oh, forgetting about at tawbah, well, as sins, and, and you people know their sins. Bi rahmatik. You remember, Ya Rabb, I'm drowning in my sins. I am drowning in regret. There are people like this. Wallah, wallah, I've seen people like this. They've accompanied us, accompanied us to Al-Umrah wal Hajj. But he still believes somehow shaitan has crippled his life. He believes that he'll never be forgiven. I've missed a lifetime of salat. Ya akhi, there is no sin I know of except that I've done it multiple times and invited others to it. And I'm a, I'm a wreck. I am destroyed. Heather, this such a person, the medicine for him is birahmatik. He needs to learn the word birahmatik. Ya Allah, save me. Save me. I'm about to drown. I've lost all hope. I'm be depressed. I'm anxious. It's killing my nafs. It's killing me. Birahmatik astaghith is the solution for that person that is in doubt about the mercy of Allah. Then. أصلح لي شأني كله. What a powerful hadith. What a powerful du'a. أصلح لي شأني كله. You know, you said برحمتك استغيث. It means, oh Allah, I seek your help. I desperately need that help and assistance and aid. 
that I overcome this trouble and, uh, that, that, and calamity in life. Then you know what he says? He says, Aslih li shatni kullahu. You're seeking the help of Allah through His mercy that He rectify all your affairs in life. What a comprehensive dua. Aslih li, rectify. Fix for me all my troubles. Fix for me all aspects of life. Why? Can Allah do that? Yeah, of course. You said al hayyul qayyum at the beginning. You see how the, the, the dua supports one another? You said he's al hayy al qayyum at the beginning. So of course the request is going to be huge in this hadith. Because it only suits the name of Allah al hayy al qayyum. Look at the request. Fix all my life. All of it. So rectify everything for me. My faith. My heart. My limbs. My organs, my cells, even my sleeping, my eating, my house, my income, my friends, my relatives, my work, my studies, my spouse, my business, my relationships, my health, my afterlife, the life I'll live in the grave, and each and every single aspect of life. It's all included in Aslih li shatni kullahu. And many more things that we can't even remember now. All in Aslih li shatni kullahu. It's a powerful dua. Has to be powerful because it began with Ya Hayya Qayyum, the greatest names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Aslih li shatni kullahu. In the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us to say, Aslih li fi dhurriyati. Rectify my generation, my children. Fix them up. Fix them up in their deen and in, in, this, in the matters of their worldly life. As Salat, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says about it, إِذَا الصَّلُوحَاتِ If it was rectified, if it was perfect and correct, all your deeds are correct. طيب Aslih. If your salat is rectified, but who can rectify your salat? Allah Azza wa Jal can rectify. So when you say, Allah, believe it or not, it includes your salat. If you're saying, Oh Allah, rectify my salat. This salat that, you know, we're on and off in terms of khushu' in this salat. Sometimes we pray quick. Sometimes we pray so quick. That wallahi, we are embarrassed if this salat was recorded and then played on a screen in front of everyone. Now, sometimes people pray like this at home. We're all guilty of it. If there's no one there, you see, you, you, you pray it. Except Allah Azza wa Jalla has bestowed His mercy upon and has that khushu' in His heart. A salat that if it was recorded, Wallah, billah, you yourself would be embarrassed of watching it. Had this is what you want to meet Allah Azza wa Jalla with on the Day of Judgment? Aslih li shatni kullahu also includes rectify my salat. Fix it up for me. So that whatever I have prayed, of course it's full of shortcomings. It's faulty. That's not what Allah Azza wa deserves of you. But if Allah rectifies all that wrong of yours in the past, you'll be good to go on the day of judgment. And you see from the mercy of Allah Azza wa is this, I tell you something. You probably don't know this. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, uh, Ahsana ma amilu. Allah Azza wa Jal will take the best of your deeds and judge you based on that. All the salat that you did, the best of them will be chosen and the rest will be judged on that. Allahu Akbar. هذه الصورة it's in in سورة الزمر. فمن أظلم من كذب على الله وكذب الصدق يفجأه وليس في جهنم مثل الكافرين. الذي جاء بالصدق وصدق به أولئك المتقون لهم ما يشعرون عند ربهم ذلك ليكفر الله عنهم أسوأ الذي عملوا ويجزيهم أجرهم بأحسن الذي كانوا يعملون. He gives them reward according to the best action they did. Look at the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. And He will remove from them the worst of deeds. شوف الله أكبر. You might think that Allah will forgive the minor sins but the major I get pulled over for. That in the ayah he says the, may the worst of them he'll remove. And that automatically means the minor are gone as well. Rahmatullahi Azza wa Jal. That's why bi rahmatika astaghith aslih li sha'ni kullahu. If Allah Azza wa Jal answered this dua for you and rectified all your affairs and matters, well, khalas, what else do you want to do? What else do you want in life? You've achieved everything. Heather, if this dua is not part of your life, what are you missing out on a lot, a lot, a lot of your deen? That's why we go back and we say, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaching it to Fatima, the greatest teaching to the greatest. Finally, the last part of this hadith, وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَىٰ نَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ 
Wallahi, this is huge with the second last part. Rectify all my affairs and Allah at the same time, do not entrust me, don't leave me to myself even for the blink of an eye. And this implies the desperate need of the slave for his Lord. Every moment of your life you need Allah Azza wa When you eat, when you sleep, when you drive, when you talk, when you worship. Don't entrust me to myself, even just a blink of an eye. You know, there is a, a weak addition. You know, what's common when you hear this? What else? Does anyone know a continuation of this? There is a continuation that's mentioned. Don't entrust me to myself even for the blink of an eye, nor any less than that. But this is weak because there is nothing less than the blink of an eye. See this? That much don't allow me to rely upon myself. You know how important it is to reflect over this last part? Don't entrust me to myself even for the blink of an eye. Especially in this day and age. This day and age of technology and advancement. And a person has become deceived and tricked and fooled to think that everything is in his control. Heck, people now think that everything is in their control. People think they can rely upon themselves. I trust in myself. <clears throat> People think I got where I got in life because of my skills, and my contracts, my contacts, my experience, my hard work, my expertise, my knowledge. This is all arrogance. Allah Azza wa he speaks about the corrupt state of people. He mentions it in the Quran. He says, Fasad. Corruption will reach such a point on earth that Ahluha, the people that live on a Dhanna, they would be certain that they have full ability and control over it, over the earth. It is at that moment where Allah sends His punishment. But there is a point where mankind becomes that fooled and deceived to think we own it all, we control it all. This end of dhikr it humbles you. You're saying, Allah, do not entrust me to myself even for this much, a blink of an eye. Allahu Akbar. Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, rahimahullah, from the great scholars of Saudi, he passed away now. Allah yarhamu, he was asked, a person asked him, he said, Sheikh, what is your opinion on this new word that trends among people? I trust myself. Trust in yourself. Self-confidence. Oh, what's the reality of this word? Is it permissible in Islam to say, I have self-confidence? Or oh, I can make a program, a self-development program. I'll call you in. Come and build your self-confidence. Trust in yourself. He said, this is impermissible. And he said, the proof for this is the end of this hadith. Do not entrust me to myself even for the blink of an eye. i tell you something. What do you mean... Uh, Self-confidence. What do you mean I trust yourself? You know your nafs. What's the reality of your nafs? In the nafs la amaratun bisu. A nafs is weak. A nafs calls you to sin and desire. If you're let to your own nafs, you're gonna run wild on earth. Because a nafs tadru amaratun bisu illa ma rahima rabbi. It calls to evil. It calls, so if, if you are to trust and rely on yourself, your nafs is weak. It's going to destroy you. You need Allah's help over your nafs. How do you want to rely on your nafs? How do you want to say, I trust in myself? You need Allah to help you upon your nafs. So you need to think, brothers and sisters, in Islam. Subhanallah. وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَىٰ نَفْسِي طَرْفَةً How many people fell victim to fitan of doubts and desires because they approach these matters believing they will not be affected. Oh, trust me, trust me, it's just a look. I know myself, I will not fall into zina. And then eventually he falls into zina. He trusted himself, I trust myself. How many said, no, 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 trust me, it's just a book. I'll read it, I'll learn, I'll see, I understand. He read it and then he became a kafir at the end because of the doubts that are in it. He trusted himself. He said, no, no, I know. He didn't follow the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
When Umar radiallahu anhu carried a copy of a Torah and he was reading it, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa got angry with Umar. He said, Ya Umar, why are you reading a Torah? If Musa alayhi salam was with us, he would have no choice but to follow me. He wouldn't even turn to a Torah. Why are you reading it for? Nah, there's people like that. I watch this podcast, the Akhil podcast, that was full of kufr and doubts. Then I trust me, it will not affect me. Why you go? Then after a few, few months, it could be a few years. Well, there's something, I don't know where I heard it, but it's always affecting my mind, my brain, my heart. I can't process it. Can you solve it for me? Sure, solve it. Heather, because you trusted yourself for that instant. Look what happened. Don't trust your nafs. Don't trust your nafs. Always. When you say, oh Allah, don't entrust me to my nafs, even for the blink of an eye, meaning you're saying, Allah, I'm going to follow your commandment. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's commandment, even if it goes against my nafs. Because that's the guidance. That's, that's al hayat is here. This is where life of iman is. If I'm led to my own self, I can be ruined. I'll be destroyed. Subhanallah. Bi rahmatika astaghith. And then you see, uh, all your worship comes from Allah Azza wa It's Allah who enables you. Allah enables you. Don't ever think. Right, some people, they're like, you know, Wallah, ana, khalas, nah, I set the alarm. Alarm's going to wake me up for Salat al Fajr. He ends up not waking up. That's a worldly means. Don't rely on it. Because you're relying on something weak. You're relying on a phone. You rely on Allah to wake you up for Salat al Fajr. And this is a means. Ya Allah, put it on. Let's see. A means. But your reliance is upon Allah through this dua. Ya Hayya Qiyum bi rahmatika. Aslih ni, ni. Rectify my matters, rectify my sleep so that I get up on the time that is pleasing to you. Don't allow me to rely on myself. I can't rely on myself. I'm a weak human being. A human being loves to sleep. If the matter was left off to me, I'd, I'd rather sleep and rest. So don't ever dare to think that you can rely on yourself to worship Allah. You always need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all your matters of worship. And all matters of life. Now, this is our dua, and I finally share with you. There's a narration by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, that he said, whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam karabahu amrun, whenever the calamity became intense upon him, he would say, Ya hayyu ya qayyum, bi rahmatika astaghith, and stop there. So, brothers and sisters in Islam, this is not only a dhikr that is to be said once in the morning, once in the evening, but also in times of intense calamity, the believer is encouraged to say, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmatika, Astaghith. And you repeat that powerful words, pondering and focusing over its deep meanings. You have to know the meanings. You have to know the meaning of a dhikr before you say it. Otherwise, it will have little to no effect. Let me, these adhkar are weapons, and they are the strongest weapons because they are the words of Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And just like now, let's say I gave you the latest weapon in the market, and I said here, use it against your enemy. If you had no clue in terms of how to operate it, it is of little to no benefit. You don't know how to use it. How's it going to help you? But let's say I said to you, this is the latest weapon. I gave you a 15-minute course. How to use it, how to reload it, how to aim with it, how to everything with it. Ah, that's a, that's a powerful tool that's in your hand. It'll do damage because you know how to use it. And of course, our deen and it has the better of examples. But the thing is, when you read a dhikr, have no clue what you're reading, you have a powerful weapon in your hand. It's going to have little to no effect because you don't know what you're saying. But if you learn what it means and understand it, and that was bi-ithnillahi ta'ala our attempt tonight, we ask Allah Azza wa to grant us understanding. But now you understand this dua a little better. Now when you say it in times of calamity in the morning, in the afternoon, it's going to have an effect on you. You will see its effect in your life bi-ithnillah because now you're speaking words, you know what they mean. So he's going to be a powerful tool in your hand. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us acceptance. Ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, our shortcomings. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy upon us, to be pleased with us all. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us the highest levels in the paradise. 
وحسن أولئك رفيقا جزاكم الله خيرا brothers and sisters in Islam وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين